Hi there, this is Hans Forsman with Napkin Engineering and a short uh, additional um, kind of like overview in regards to Sound Plan Essentials graphic plot uh, capabilities. I want to kind of go over this uh, demo project uh, that I used for the uh, general overview for Sound Plan Essential. And um, so this here is again the program settings. Then here we have the editor that shows the uh, general outline of the uh, project area which is uh, basically a strip mall with a couple of sources, uh, a compact compactor in the, the back of the building, a couple HVAC systems on top of the roof, a parking lot, and then a road uh, that kind of goes uh, south to north. And uh, we have a residential area in this area with uh, a wall surround, uh, kind of separating that from the uh, strip mall. And then we have some additional houses here on the other side. Uh, so one thing I want to kind of talk about in this uh, uh, video here is talking about object types and colors. So on the object types, uh, actually let me go to colors first. Here you can define your own uh, color settings uh, for the project. And you can make changes to this color settings. Uh, for example, you could uh, generate a uh, black to white uh, color settings for the color coding later on. Uh, you select one color, then you place it in one of these spots. You can select the second color, uh, put it in the intermediate uh, uh, box here, and we move it in here. And then by going to the, the last point here, that's the very right, we can, uh, by hitting the calculator, we can interpolate between this uh, black color to this white color box. You can have additional intermediate uh, points, so you can have like a uh, change from, for example, white uh, to, for example, uh, yeah, like a, a red uh, to, for example, a blue, and then you have kind of like a different uh, set of colors. So we click OK. And um, then as a second uh, settings here on the options, we have the object types. And here under object types, we can define the, the display in the editor and then also in the graphic plot how different objects get uh, presented. So for right now, for example, the main buildings are here sh uh, shown in the editor and in the graphic plot. They have a fill color. In this case, it is a uh, like a light turquoise. We can turn that off, and then let's look at auxiliary buildings. We have here a uh, like a light blue, so we can maybe make that a darker blue. And let's uh, check out how that changes everything. So here now everything is blue. All the commercial buildings and uh, the residential have no coloring at all, also no background color. So let me change that back to what we had. So we have main buildings. I turn on the colors, and I'll make those uh, a light turquoise. And the auxiliary, I uh, make it a, a light, lighter blue. Then here we have hatch lines. So if you like hatch lines, uh, so you can turn them on, turn them off. You can change, uh, change the type of hatch line. Um, and then it will basically add these hatch lines. The edge line is the line that is going around the building. So again, here you can change that. So we could uh, maybe make that a black here. Other uh, objects are, of course, receivers, receiver at building, calculation area, and so forth. Um, interesting, what we'll look in later will be the grid noise map. But for right now, I'll, I'll leave this here so you get kind of the general idea of changing this. Uh, in regards to changing the outline or defining a building for auxiliary building or main building, uh, you basically just select the building and uh, turn the uh, check mark here on main building on and off. And that is basically already all, the, all you need to uh, make the modification in regards to the color coding. So if you've done your modeling, um, then of course you can look at the graphic plots. And the graphic plots, um, they look like this here. In this case, these are the single point results. Uh, again, uh, these uh, plots here are these little tables. You can, for these receivers, you can arrange, change around. 
uh, you just go into the center of the uh, the table you hold your mouse uh, over it and you get like a little a little double arrow and by holding the right mouse button you can move around these uh, tables and um, so this is a plot with an aerial map in the background we can turn off the aerial map uh, bitmap uh, by turning this off here on this uh, in the editor and then it basically will just show the uh, uh, raw input data. Um, if we go to the grid noise map here, in this case the grid noise map day, uh, we have right now uh, the object settings for grid map is uh, color coding between the contour lines and uh, so the contour lines are black so here we have the distribution or the color coding of the uh, levels that were predicted for the daytime and we can change that again on the options object types and we can change uh, the grid map and uh, we can change that for example the fill colors is turned off and we use scale colors to colors, color code this, the lines rather than having the, um, the areas between the lines color coded so we click OK, and then here what you notice, the scale is changing. So it's basically this color, it represents 90 decibels. The, uh, the red uh, represents about 60 decibels. The lines are a little bit on the thick side, so let me rechange that. And uh, we change it to a 1, or maybe a 0.8. And so here we have uh, the lines a little thinner. Now this uh, display is very often used uh, when you have a, uh, the background turned on with the aerial map. So let me turn that on, go back to the graphic plot. So here it's uh, nicely uh, to see kind of the contour lines over the aerial map. Again, if you would turn on the fill color, then we wouldn't see anything in the background. So this is again a very nice, uh, a good view in regards to plotting an aerial map in the background. So let me turn off the aerial map and um, let's go back and uh, change the color coding and I'll fill the colors and we'll uh, make this a little bit of a thinner line here. And uh, one of the things uh, you may notice here is that, uh, let's see, object types. So we want to turn off use color scale. And another thing that I want to show here is like the parking lot is not shown here. So the parking lot, so if we look at grid noise map, we have a draw sequence of six. So the higher the draw sequence, the later uh, object will be drawn. So right now this is draw sequence six and the parking lot is also draw sequence six. So that means they are at the same level and it turns out that the parking lot will be drawn before the colors uh, of the contour maps are, sh are shown. So by changing the draw sequence to seven, uh, we will the parking lot will be plotted on top of the contour map. So now here you can see this is the outline of the parking lot here. So again on the objects types the draw sequence defines how quickly or in what order uh, objects will be plotted. It defines uh, where we have uh, an object in the editor in a graphic plot. We have some legend text and then uh, most of the other um, attributes are how it's plotted if we want to show any hatching uh, or if we want to um, uh, just have a, um, a fill color defined. In terms of the parking lot, we probably will, don't want to do a fill color, but a hatching may be a good idea to, to have that, maybe as uh, like a diagonal of hatching. And with that, it's clearly defined where the parking lot or where the parking lot source is in this, in this plot. This uh, and then again at the end we can save this uh, this graphic by clicking on this uh, disk with the uh, dots below that and we can call it uh, whatever you want and so you can define your name and uh, what type of bitmap uh, is generated or, or graphic file is generated so we have a selection between bitmap, jpeg, png, tiff, windows meta file and enhanced uh, meta files. Um, uh, one last thing also on the sheet settings. Um, uh, the settings, uh, we have several uh, tabs here from the seat attributes, uh, the background, so you can change the, the background. You can change the size uh, 
for the US and Canada, the letter size is probably the most uh, commonly used, the background color of, uh, your, uh, of the sheet, the dimensions uh, for your logo and so forth. Uh, we have a logo that you can load from your drive, uh, the different the dimensions in regards to the positioning of the map on the drawing, the different titles for each of the maps, so here we have three maps, and uh, the color scale. So in this case, uh, where the color starts, in this case at 30 decibels with 5 dB increments, we have a total of 14 increments, and here the, we define where the color starts. So in this case, it starts at the blue, it goes all the way to the green. So in this case, we have a different color scheme. We could change that, for example, from a red going down to a blue. Uh, this would be for the daytime. So now our daytime uh, scale would look like this here and the nighttime is still the same as what we had before. So if you'd like to use different uh, scalings or color sc uh, schemes, that's another way of using those. Thank you for uh, watching this video, and um, if you have any questions, uh, just uh, contact me. Thank you, and 